Hi and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're looking at the hanging paper text effect tutorial. And we have our canvas here which is about 1920 by 1080. We have our colours on the left hand side and we're rocking a radial gradient. A nice mango gold in the middle moving out into a tangerine orange. Yeah, very simple. Well, let's get straight into it. I'm going to go ahead and activate my text tool in my toolbox area and let's just draw a big box here. I'm going to type in story and we want story to be in caps. Right, I'm going to go and navigate to Baloo. Now Baloo is a free font. I'll leave the the font in um name in the in the um uh, I'll leave a link to the blog post on this and which will have the font in the blog post. So we've got story right here. Let's go ahead and just increase this a bit more. Something like this looks good. It's gonna make it white and then we're gonna convert this to a path. So we're gonna go to text path sorry object to path and this will create individual paths for each one but they'll still be in a group so what we're going to need to do is go to object and ungroup or you can simply hit ctrl and u and each one of them are paths now in their own in their own right and they're not in a group so we can begin to you know act on these we can scale them up a little bit more uh, so First up, let's bring these together. Let's bring the S together. In fact, every other letter, let's change it a different color for now. Let's make it this red or this orange. Right, so we can set them apart. They're gonna be white, but we just wanna be able to set them apart from each other. And um, let's lift all of these up about here, holding control so that we're lifting them up straight. Good. And let's add our R and let's add our Y. Good, so we have story. Bring the S a little closer. I think the R is looking okay. And it covers it all just nicely. And let's move it down a bit. And let's make everything white once more. Okay. This looks just about right. Good. Next, I'm gonna just highlight everything, duplicate it, and we're gonna to go to path and union. Good. And I'm gonna place this, give this a different color, and make sure that it's placed underneath all of this right here. And we're gonna keep that there. We'll soon work on it. But let's move into our text first. That's on the front. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna to go to lips tool. And we're going to hold control and shift and drag out until we have a circle about this size, which is roughly 10 by 10 millimeters. Roughly 10 by 10 millimeters. Good. And we're going to do this circle for each one of these texts. So we want it roughly in the center of the text in terms of its um, horizontal alignment. So I'm going to go to object align and distribute and I'm just going to center it in the middle you know make sure that you're centering off the last selected and duplicate here control and D I'm going to do this for each one of them duplicate control and D move it to the middle duplicate here let's take a look at the R quickly now in some cases the middle may not look so middle-ish so what you want to do is um you may want to just move it in accordance to what you think the middle would look better as. You know, for the R, that will be one such case. Good. And then what we're going to do, select the circle and the corresponding letter and go to path and difference. Good. Select the circle and the corresponding letter, path and 
difference. Remember that we have an orange copy at the back of this, so that's why it's still orange. Path difference, if I go to this color and just give it a, say, a blue, you'll see that the colors is blue. So the circle is actually cut out for true. It's cut out. So we're gonna do select this and the Y. I'm gonna go to path and difference and path and different so we can see that this is this is actually cut out good and these are the holes that our strings are going to be attached to that we saw in the tutorial okay for the next step we want to just have a little separation now so we're going to go ahead and do the gradients for this that gives us that paper that paper curve effect starting with the s Good, so we're going to go ahead to the gradient tool and, um, well, before we go to the gradient tool, let's duplicate this with Control and D. And then we're going to zoom up real close and then go to Path and Inset, or you can hit Control and the left bracket. And even though we can't see what that does right at the moment, that's actually shrunk the, e the duplicated S to be slightly smaller then the S that he was duplicated from to fit perfectly within that that um, original S. So let's give it a color. And as you can see, it has this white out outline here. And the reason that we zoomed in when we did this is because inset tool uses pixels on the screen to determine how the inset is going to work. So the more you're zoomed out, the less accurate the inset is going to be. So if you zoom in while you do the inset, you're going to get a far more accurate inset and less curves and and um, deformations, you know, um, in your output. So I suggest if you're doing inset outsets that you zoom and you want accuracy, you zoom in. Good. So you can see here it's very accurate here. So we're just going to go ahead now with this color. In fact, let's give it a, no, this is the right color. And we're going to go to the gradient tool. You can either go to the gradient tool in the toolbox or press G. And then we're going to click on this new color. And we're going to click and drag down. And when we click and drag down, this looks good. And we want the end node, the last gradient stop. So the first one is that gray that we have up here. And the last one is going to be this red. Good. And then we're going to keep this clicked and go to object, fill and stroke. Or you can go to, or you can hit control shift and F. And you're going to reduce the alpha of this stop down here to zero. Good. And then that gives us a nice gradient effect that you know, that nice paper effect, almost like it's bending inwards. Right. And you can play about with it until you get the perfect desired result that you wanted. Good. All right, we're gonna do the same for this one, which is the T, I'm gonna duplicate it, make sure we zoomed in right, nice and close. Go to path and inset. Good, and then we're gonna go to the gradient tool or you can press G on your keyboard and we're going to select that same gradient. I think it's the last one I've created. Good, at the top. And we're going to go ahead and do the same sort of thing. Put it up. Good. Now, you're not going to see the bend effect quite as nicely because we don't have the blur at the background, but when the blur is in, at the background, you'll see the bend effect come out really nicely. So I'm going to do the same for the O, duplicate it, come in real close, path and inset. Uh, we're only insetting once. And just going to go ahead and um, apply the same gradient. Let's move it down. And um, lift this up a bit. And let's put it underneath the T. Great. We're going to go to the R, duplicate, go to path and inset. And go to gradient. And go to 
the first grading up here. So when you you go into the tool control box, sorry, to add to find that gradient here. And you can find the original gradient that you use for the S and just use the same gradient, you know, for each letter. There's no need to have to re-gradient, reapply a gradient for this, as the, it's the same gradient and the same effect really. So you're gonna duplicate the Y and then go to path and inset. And lastly, go to gradient or press G, go to the gradient tool control box, I'll go to select and you're going to pick the same gradient that you've been using for the rest of the letters. Good. All right, and it's above the R, so we're just gonna bring it below in the hierarchical order. And we have our paper cutout effects here. So remember that we duplicated um, the union and unified the letters below. We're gonna use that now. So first up, we're going to just hold control and pull it down with it selected. So it's about here. Good. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time and pull it down again. And just put that underneath. And the first one, we want that to be black. Or even this brown is good. So we've got this effect here. I'm going to select the both of these. I want to group them, so I'm going to go to path and object, sorry, and group, or you can click control and G. And now we're going to blur these out. Now I think a blur of roughly, um, yeah, I think 4.7, anything from 4 to 4.5 to, to 5 will give you a decent blur really nice and then I'm gonna go ahead and just reduce the opacity and we can see that you know with it fitness you can see how the text is beginning to sort of apply that bend effect that paper effect with this blur out as if the text was bending itself but you know at the top and um, yeah I think this is a good opacity for us so we're looking good now. We actually got the the effect in terms of its main constituents. You know, we can play about with the way that the orange blurs out. That blur is like a highlight blur. Really helps in selling the story of the text. <laughs> you know, make it look more authentic. So it's a nice tip for you. You know, to always add a highlight blur when you're doing your blurs which reflect the color of the background it really helps to bring out the reality to make it make your text or make your effect that you're doing look, look more real. So we're gonna go ahead and um, go to the T now. We want the T and the R to be separated from the S, O and Y via a blur. So we're gonna duplicate that T and then make it um, this brown. And what I'm going to do is activate the Bezier tool and just cut this new, this new duplicated T in half. Go to path and I'm gonna to go to division. I'm gonna remove the bottom part of the T and for the top part of the T, we're just gonna put it underneath. Good, and let's just see it quickly. Right, underneath. And then we're just gonna carry, carry it down a bit, holding control as we carry it down and just hitting the down button. So that moving it via increments and that gives us the most control when we're trying to um, translate things by small increments and so you hold control while you're moving it down and up also you hold alt sorry forgive me you hold alt when you're carrying it down and up and then we're going to apply a blur i think 4.7 the same blur that we have in the background is good and let's make this black and reduce the opacity down to something like um, 20%. 20% good, perhaps 25%. You know, may want it a bit more. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase it to, um, let's increase it to a far darker value, 50%. Yeah, 50% looks good. And then I'm going to cut this T in half once more. So I'm going to draw a Bezier tool 
B to activate the Bezier tool. Hold Shift and select the blur. And you're going to go to Path and Division once more. You know, and um, I think it's below right. Just lift it up a bit. Let's lift this arm, um, lift this one up. Or just this is above the blur, so let's put it underneath. Um, put it underneath one more time. Right, so we can select this blur. And now it's separated, I can use a gradient here. And I'm gonna use a linear gradient and just pull out. And I'm gonna use a linear gradient here and pull out. So it's darker closer towards the T. And let's just blur it out again by a five and blur this by the same five and that looks like a much nicer effect right. much nicer effect separating it from the s and o and we're going to go to the r now and duplicate the r oh yeah we're going to duplicate the r not the inset but the white part of the r and the white part of the o and just going to duplicate them Oh, we've duplicated them already, sorry, I'm going to select both of these. And I'm going to go to Path and Intersection. Good, and then I'm going to make this black. And shift it slightly to the left. And then use the Hierarchy Tools in the, tool, in the Select Tool Control Box and bring it below the R and the Inset R. And we're going to go ahead and blur this in the fill and stroke dialog box. And if you're out of the fill and stroke dialog box, Control Shift F or go to Object Fill and Stroke will carry carry right back there. And we're going to reduce the opacity. Good. This looks about good. Good opacity reduce. And we're just going to do the same thing for the R and the Y. So I'm going to duplicate the R and the Y. Go to so duplicating with Ctrl and D, go to Path and Intersection. Or you can hit Ctrl, Shift and Star. And you're going to color this intersection black. And we're going to shift this one to the right. So the R and O is to the left and the R and Y is to the right. And we're going to blur this out a bit. All right, the same five is good. Oops. With a five blur. Right. And I'm going to put it underneath using the hierarchy tools in the tool control box of so the selection tool. And I'm just going to reduce the opacity again. Right, let's carry this out a bit more. And let's scale it up with control and shift with an equal scaling. And we see that it's separated. Let's scale this one up too. Uh, and um, can even bring out the opacity a bit for this. Yeah, I think I may even just drag this out a bit and skate in. Uh, reduce the opacity. I mean, all of this now is just playing about to get the best effects, you know. But the the crooks of the tutorial is pretty much done. So the last we have to do is add the string. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use the Bezier tool, hold Control as you draw up. I press B to activate the Bezier tool, where you can find the Bezier tool in your toolbox. And draw Bezier here. I think that's what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The 10th one up from the bottom. So the Bezier tool is the 10th tool up from the bottom on the toolbox to your right hand side of Inkscape's UI. I'm going to go ahead and draw these lines here. And all these while, I'm just duplicating it and then holding control to translate it on the X axis, you know, or the horizontal axis. And that just makes it more efficient. You know, and I'm, I'm only eyeballing it for the center. I mean, you can definitely, you know, use the alignment and distribute tool to to get it perfect, but I'm just eyeballing it right now. The line's a little thin. It's gonna go to fill and stroke dialog box, go to stroke style, increase it to like a 0 0.7. Right, that looks much better. And there we have it. Our hanging paper text effect 
tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments section. If you have any suggestions on how to do this, you know, or suggestions in terms of for improvement of the tutorial, um, go ahead and leave those in the comment section. Uh, if they're constructive, I appreciate that. And um, everybody appreciates that. And that just helps for a better community of learning. You know, because I have a lot to learn. And I admit that. And I'm happy to get that information from you. So if you, if you have that, you know, feel free to to, to um, comment that in the comment section okay so go ahead and smash that subscribe button and until I see you again with another Inkscape tutorial or tutorial in general get up and design a new door later